The essay I would like to discuss is by Lewis Thomas. It's called To Err is Human. This essay is from 1979. Now, I think when you see the title or you hear the title, you will immediately think to yourself, some of you, that this is most likely an essay concerning theology. Remember the phrase, to err his human, to forgive is divine. Well, Lewis Thomas was a physician, a biologist, an essayist, an educator. He taught at a number of institutions, including MIT and Princeton, and he lived from 1913 to 1993. I first became familiar with him, actually, from many of the essays he wrote in the New England Journal of Medicine. Now, let me hasten to add that I'm almost entirely illiterate when it comes to the subject of medicine. But I nonetheless subscribe to the New England Journal of Medicine because I found that this journal and what I would call its equivalent in England, The Lancet, were these two were the only journals of medicine which generally had a literary element as well. Of course, they had essays, um, uh, articles, uh, scholarly articles, which were intended entirely for specialists, and the bulk of each issue was of that tenor. Right? So Lewis Thomas uh, used to write for the New England Journal of Medicine, and he also wrote a book called Listening to Mahler's Ninth Symphony. And this is how I first became familiar with this essay, To Err is Human. So this is not an essay on, on in theology. Uh, it's not an essay on, on uh, the fact that we're all human and we make mistakes. Right? Of course, it is on this, but when I say it's not on what we would expect it to be, what I mean to say is that in casual conversation, when someone makes a mistake, you comfort them and you say, well, you know, humans make mistakes all the time. So don't worry about it. Move on. Right? What he's interested in, Lewis Thomas, in this essay, is really the question of what is a place of error to make a mistake in human thought? And what is its place in advancing thought? That's really what this essay is about. Right? And he speaks, of course, as a physician, as a biologist, as a scientist. And I think that he speaks on the, you know, uh, he speaks from uh, the point of view of someone who holds to the view that what is particular about science is the method of trial and error. That the scientist puts forward a hypothesis and then he tests he or she tests this hypothesis, and that's how things move along. And if the hypothesis can be falsified, as Karl Popper had put it, then you have to come up with a better hypothesis. But I think that the subject matter of this essay is a little bit more than what we might call the scientific method. Because what he's also interested in is, what is it that distinguishes human beings from animals. Right? Now, a great many philosophers have been interested in this particular question. And one of the arguments that I think many had advanced is that what most evidently distinguishes humans from animals is the fact that human beings have the faculty of reason. They have the faculty to distinguish between what is right and wrong. It's a different matter that not everyone always exercises this faculty and that some persist in doing wrong, right? Those are, those are other issues. But what does distinguish humans from animals? And of course, we know that particularly in the last 20, 30 years, uh, there have been a great many people who have come forward with 
uh, you know, various kinds of meditations and reflections on the animal, right? Uh, the, the topos, the figure of the animal uh, in thought. Um, and we also know that there's a whole body of literature which argue that, you know, animals have been vastly underestimated by humans, that many animals are extremely intelligent and so on. Now, Lewis Thomas was writing this in 1979. I think that he actually hits upon a very interesting idea. And that idea is that what distinguishes humans from animals is the fact that humans make mistakes, okay? And that we should not worry about making these mistakes. He says, mistakes are at the very base of human thought, embedded there, feeding the structure like root nodules. If we were not provided with a knack of being wrong, we would never get anything useful done. Now look at the wording, right? If we were not provided with the knack of being wrong, there's a knack of being wrong. Of wrong. Usually we think of someone who is the knack of being right. He says that there has there is something called the knack of being wrong, right? And it is this knack of being wrong which is critical for human development. We think our way along by choosing between right and wrong alter alternatives, and the wrong choices have to be made as frequently as the right ones. We get along in life this way. We are built to make mistakes coded for error. Now, this insight is what makes this essay particularly interesting and which distinguishes it from the general commonplace kind of thinking about you know, error, when we console our son or our daughter as parents when they make a mistake and we say, well, it's perfectly fine to make a mistake. You don't have to sob over it, right? What he's interested in, and that what interested me also is, what is a place of error in pedagogy? I think it's very critical that when we do pedagogy, that we also teach works that we believe to be works of error and see whether the student can in fact then actually discern this himself or herself. Right? And to reinforce this point, if we go to the next page of this essay, it's a very short essay. It's an essay of perhaps something like maybe 1,500 words, four pages or so. He says, um, speaking about the, the faculty of making a mistake, our facility in actually making mistakes as well, the fact that we err constantly. Right? And apropos of all of this, he says, the lower animals do not have this splendid freedom. They are limited, most of them, to absolute infallibility. So what an interesting way of putting it. Cats, for all their good sight, never make mistakes. I have never seen a maladroit, clumsy, or blundering cat. And I must say that simply based on observation, I would have to agree with them. Sitting in my back patio at my home in Los Angeles, the same home where I've lived for 20 years, on countless number of days, I've seen squirrels jump from one branch to another to jump on the wall from a branch and it's done unerringly, right? Flawlessly, flawlessly. Dogs are sometimes fallible, Thomas continues, occasionally able to make charming minor mistakes, but they get this way by trying to mimic their masters. Fish are flawless in everything they do. And you could say that there's less scope for making an error because the range of what a fish has to do is very limited. Right? You swim from one place to another. By instinct, you try to preserve yourself, protect yourself, right? etc. Whereas a human could err in a billion ways, so to speak. Individual cells in a tissue are mindless machines, perfect in their performance, as absolutely inhuman as bees. And this then leads Lewis to the conclusion, which I will mention. 
And I will conclude with that thought as well. We should have this in mind as we become dependent on more complex computers for the arrangement of our affairs. In fact, what instigated this essay for, for Lewis Thomas was the fact that, as he said, writing in 1979, when computers were beginning to be used, that it was inconceivable to him that, that there was anyone who was not receiving something in the mail or something that they had been told, which indicated that there had been a computer error. You know, when you're when suddenly, for example, you've had an electricity bill which used to be, you know, a hundred dollars or fifty dollars or, or you know, five hundred rupees in India, and then suddenly you find that well, it's now ten thousand rupees. You know, well, there's been some kind of computer error, right? Or your bank statement doesn't at all reflect what it should reflect, um, and so forth and so on. So it's so here he's now interested in how we should think of computers. Give the computers their heads, I say, let them go their way. If we can learn to do this, turning our heads to one side and wincing while the work proceeds, the possibilities for the future of mankind and computer kind are limitless. Right? And I'm skipping a few lines here. What we need then for moving ahead is a set of wrong alternatives much longer and more interesting than the short list of mistaken courses that any one of us can think up right now. We need, in fact, an infinite list, and when it is printed out, we need the computer to turn on itself and select at random the next way to go. If it is a big enough mistake, we would find ourselves on a new level, stunned, out in the clear, ready to move again. Right? So, Errors, the, the faculty of making a mistake, this is critical for human development. And we have to we have to think about for those of for those who are your teachers, whether at the school level or at the university level, have to think about the place of error in pedagogy as well. Of course, we could pose some questions for Lewis Thomas. Can we, for example, are all errors equally productive? It cannot be the case that all errors are equally productive. At what point can we say that, that it becomes counterproductive to making mistakes, to constantly making mistakes? What kind of errors are productive and what kind of errors perhaps are not so, errors that may in fact actually set us back. But I think on the whole, this is a very fresh and insightful essay.